Hi, I'm Darren and welcome to Level Up Double E Lab. Well, I did it. I made one change to an old project, my HF receiver, and next thing you know, I'm going full speed down that slippery slope of a whole bunch of other things I want to change and modify. Let's have a look at what I have in mind. My recent modification to add a front end filter to my HF receiver has given me a left out feeling, <laughs> literally. I had to leave out the control board that communicates with my HF transmitter. There just wasn't enough room inside this small case for both of them. And without that control board, I can't link these two guys together anymore. Which got me to thinking, maybe it's time to move. And by that, I mean move all of the radio innards into a larger case. A case large enough to hold both the new filter and the control board. So I looked online and I found this one. Like my transmitter case, it's made from aluminum extrusions and aluminum sheet, but it's smaller and simpler. Outside dimensions are 145 by 82 by 200 millimeters. The two aluminum extrusions slide into each other, then the two end caps are held on with four screws each. The end caps have a nice brushed texture and the whole case, including the hardware, is finished in a black matte coating, which I think is anodizing. This case is going to work very nicely. It's almost three times the interior volume of the existing case, so there's definitely enough space to fit in the little communication board. Plus, there's volume to spare for a few other upgrades that I've been considering for a while, not the least of which is an integrated speaker. Now, the receiver does work just fine, of course, with an external speaker or a set of headphones, but having a speaker integrated in a receiver is obviously a great feature to have. And I just so happen to have this guy right here. It's a, a 16 ohm, 3 watt speaker that I salvaged from an old TV a couple of years ago, and it's going to fit in there just nicely. Another upgrade is to increase the size of the display. I built the receiver with a 1.8 inch display, which works fine, it's just a bit small, especially as compared to the 2.8 inch display that I used for my transmitter. Now with this new case, I can upgrade the receiver to also have this 2.8 inch display, which also lets me commonize the text and the graphics between the two units. This 2.8 inch display also comes in a version that has a touchscreen interface. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. A touchscreen would be a lot easier to use and would let me completely eliminate the menu encoder. Not to mention it gives a major boost to the cool factor. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to eliminate the RF gain control. It's the most useless control on the radio, mostly because I've already got automatic gain control in the IF section. So eliminating it along with the menu encoder reduces the total number of controls on the front panel from six to four, which will make for a cleaner interface. There are occasions, however, when I'm listening to a particularly strong station where I'd like to reduce the front end gain. So I'm gonna add a digitally controlled attenuator ahead of the new front end filter that I just put in. I'll control it using the touchscreen interface. If I were designing this receiver from scratch, I'd modify the circuit to select or deselect the RF preamp, but that'd be too much tear up at this point. Putting in an attenuator is a lot easier. One more improvement that I want to make is mechanical, folding feet like these here. Tilting the receiver up a few degrees would make the screen easier to see and make the entire front panel easier to interact with. Making the feet foldable will still let me stack the receiver on top of something else. Okay, so here's the complete list of everything I'm going to do to this receiver. First, of course, is to put everything in the larger case, then put in an integrated speaker, the larger display with the touchscreen interface, um, eliminate two of the six controls, add an RF attenuator, fold away feet, and of course, I got to update the software for all these changes. Now, before I dive in and start cutting metal, I need to lay out these changes to scale, which for me means updating the 3D model, which I've done. So let's take a look at how that turned out. All right, here's the 3D model that I've updated for the receiver. And I'd say the first thing to notice is just how nicely this 2.8 inch display scales with the overall size of the case. I think that's about the right proportion you could want there. Not too small, not too big. Also, the four controls definitely look less busy. And just as a refresher, this one will be power on and volume. This one will be tune and select VFO A, VFO B. Uh, this one, I believe, is the variable with uh, notch filter in the audio section. And then this one will be the uh, variable bandwidth uh, IF filter, the crystal filter. So those four controls will handle those functions. Um, just like my transmitter, there's a lot of 3D printed articles here. I'm going to 
um, repeat what I did on it with all of these protector, these corner protectors. Those work out very nicely. And then of course you can see down here what I actually came up with is a single foldable foot instead of two separate feet. There's, uh, can't really uh, zoom in here to show up, but there's going to be a spring-loaded metal detent in here. And I'll show that, of course, when I actually get that printed and put together. I think that'll help make it easier for it to stay out when it's out and stay collapsed when it's folded away. Spinning around to the back panel, there's not really any major changes here except for I'm going to put in a grill for the speaker. And, of course, I didn't bother to put hundreds of little holes in the 3D model, but just use your imagination. I'll show it shortly um, when it, what the actual part looks like. But it's much easier to put the speaker on this back panel because this is fairly straightforward to cut and modify versus trying to cut an irregular shaped hole in this top extrusion. The way to do this would be with a vertical mill and my hobby mill just doesn't have the capacity for a piece that big. So I'm just going to put the speaker on the back. And here's what the inside volume looks like in the 3D model. And right away, you can see there's the main board. And I did align it with its long axis parallel to the long, long axis of the case. That's mostly because there are a lot of connections on this edge of the board that go to the front panel. So keeping the wiring uh, close, keep the wiring shorter, makes a lot of sense to align it that way. Plus, it gives the most amount of space all the way around it. Uh, just as a reminder, in the existing case that this board is in, there's only about 10 millimeters of space roughly around all four sides. So definitely a lot more space to work with. Here's the speaker that I mentioned I was putting on the back panel. It's going to fit nicely right there. Here is that interface board. Um, it claimed or wanted to be in the same space as this guy. This is the front end filter. So these two guys were trying to fit in the same space in the old case, which drove this whole um, you know, improvement project that I'm working on anyway. And of course, it's got its own little plastic holder right here. And then lastly, here is the attenuator, the front end attenuator that I was mentioning. So let's take a closer look at it. Here's the schematic for it. It's very simple, just a double pull, double throw relay stuck between the antenna input jack and the front end filter. When the relay is de-energized, the RF signal just passes through it. But energizing the relay inserts a resistor Pi network pad into the signal chain. These specific resistances cause about 10 dB of attenuation while still maintaining a 50 ohm impedance. 10 dB is a good start. I can always reduce or increase it later by just changing those resistors. For controlling the relay, it's all pretty much conventional. I'm using a jelly bean FET driven by a digital pin on the Arduino. And of course a flyback diode around the relay coil. All this lets me use the 5 volt digital signal from the Arduino to control a 12 volt load. And here's the 3D model of the attenuator. I got it to fit on a 48 by 26 millimeter chunk of board so it is compact. For attaching it inside the case, I'm going to use the same technique that I used to secure the push to talk module on my DX60. Just a piece of heavy duty hook and loop fastener stuck to the top surface of the relay itself. Now even though this is an old school way to build a switchable attenuator, you can still find this approach being used on modern rigs like my Yaesu FT450D. There's a relay based front end attenuator right here on the schematic. Another common way to selectively control RF signals is by using diodes. Now I'm not going to go into details here and I'm certainly not going to get into pin diodes, so you'll have to do your own research if you're not familiar with this technique. It's simple and robust and uses no moving parts, but this approach requires current setting bias resistors, DC blocking capacitors, and RF blocking inductors. You don't want the DC upsetting the downstream RF circuitry, and you do not want that RF feeding back into the DC power. That's why you need all these extra parts. So that adds some complexity. Still another approach that I considered using was a digital attenuator chip, like these from analog devices. There's quite a variety to choose from, but one big problem, <laughs> they're all so tiny. Hand soldering these packages is just out of the question. Clearly they're intended for cell phones and other highly automated and miniaturized manufacturing. Digital RF switches are another option that I considered. I used the ADG918 on my Spectrum Analyzer switch project a couple of years ago. They're available on hand solderable SOT23s like this one from Macom. I'd need two of them, plus a handful of DC blocking capacitors and two digital outputs from the Nano to control them. In the end, I went with the relay solution because I already had all the parts in the junk box, plus it only takes a single digital output from the Nano to make it work. 
I've been busy 3D printing parts. There's actually 16 new parts that I had to 3D print here for this project. I'm going to carry over the four knobs from the existing case, so there'll be 20 of them by the time all said and done. Uh, these are the eight uh, feet, four on the bottom, four on the top. These two are uh, lower left, lower right. And here is that foldable foot that'll go between them. Uh, I think all these turned out nicely. I think they're all going to work just fine. Going to use a piece of an uh, eighth-inch brass rod to make the axles for the foot. Other things to talk about, this is that grill that I mentioned. Then I'm going to put that on the back panel for the speaker to... Uh, you know, for the sound to get out of the speaker. And then, of course, need an adapter to put the speaker in this grill onto that back panel. Uh, what else to talk about? Oh, uh, the bezel. I'm using the same uh, attachment scheme that I use on my HF transmitter. So I'll show this in more detail when I get ready to put it on. But here's the 2.8 the inch display ready to go. You can probably notice I've got an Arduino over here. Um, I did end up buying a Nano Every in case I need it. I'm hopeful that I can still get everything to fit in the memory of the existing Nano, but the Every has uh, 48K of flash versus 32K, uh, 6K of RAM versus 2K. So if I need the extra horsepower, I can put it in. It is pin, pin to pin compatible. I might have to update some of the libraries, but I'm hoping that I won't. And then lastly, uh, I've got several printouts here to scale for the front panel, the back panel, and then positioning the main board in the lower housing. So these will be what I'll start with in the next episode. Okay, so maybe changing out the microcontroller might be a bit of overkill for the scope of this project, but never hurts to be prepared. That's one of the things that I'm a little concerned about. I might be right up against the limit, and if I do have to change it out, then I'll change it out. So I hope you guys enjoyed this preview of the work that I have planned for my little receiver, and I do hope you stick with me as I go through these modifications. So until next time, bye for now.